Yo, what's up, y'all? This is DMC in the place to be. The only place for you to be is right here with Facts TV so you can get the facts. I'm here to unite all originals. Okay, what does that involve? We're getting ready to do a big campaign for Adidas. Me and Run, well, I think it's been 25, over 25 years since Run DMC and Adidas began our relationship. 25 years, over 25 years ago when we made the song My Adidas. And that unity was creative, it was inspirational, it impacted cultures, mm -hmm. you know, music culture, sneaker culture, fashion culture. Um, it brought white people, black people, Asian people, Germany together. So. It was a lot of um, uniting going on, and it just started with this Adidas sneaker. So I always tell people that Adidas is more than just footwear. It's a statement. Mm. When you see those three stripes, they mean something that's positive, that's powerful. Mm. So we decided, well, Adidas decided to do a campaign, a presentation, a demonstration of the power of positivity and what happens when creative, purposeful, visionary, artsy people get together. And basically, you know, the, t the name of the campaign is Unite All, or uh, U Unite All Originals, which is just bringing a bunch of people together. For Run DMC, the favorite period had to be the Raising Hell album period. You know, because, you know, we had came out with the first album, Run DMC. And on the third album, Raising Hell, is where we did Walk This Way, where Run DMC got together with Aerosmith and we did the remake of Walk This Way. But Walk This Way isn't the first rock rap record. Right. The first rock rap record was Rockbox, which was the first rap video on MTV. But even then, it was still, we didn't have an idea of what we was doing, you know. You know, our management and the label was like, oh my God, we're on MTV. We didn't even have MTV in Queens, New York, where we grew up at. Wow. So we was like, why are they so happy? Our whole thing was, could we just get on the mic? And I think, I, I guess because of the, it was hip hop, breakbeat with rock guitars. That was the first unifying um, sig significant thing, creative thing that we did. Then, once we saw that Rockbox work, the next album was called King of Rock. Yeah. And then we did a video, which was um, when we got in inducted into the Rock Roll Hall of Fame, the Rock Roll Hall of Fame said, don't you know King of Rock was prophetic? And we was like, what do you mean? Because when we made that record, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame didn't exist. It didn't start till 86. But the King of Rock video was us going into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame after being told, you guys can't come in here. This is a rock and roll museum. And I scream, I'm the King of Rock. And we go in the museum and pull the plug on Jerry Lee Lewis and throw the hat on the head of the Beatles. And the funny thing is we take Michael Jackson's glove, throw it on the ground and stomp on it. And we didn't want to be negative towards rock and roll. But the whole idea of that video was, oh, nobody thought hip hop was a legitimate form of music. They didn't think that rap and them seeing would be around. They thought we was like the hula hoop or something. So the video was a statement of even if we was a fad, even if hip hop were to end two or three years from 1985, we made sure we was gonna make our presence known. So we had built up all this momentum you know, Rockbox on MTV, King of Rock Statement, this and all other rock stars. Even when Raising Hell rolled around, we had the My Adidas record on. We had Peter Piper. That was like the perfect album. Yeah. Plus we had this song with Aerosmith and Walk This Way. Mm -hmm. You know, and people still were saying, excuse me guys, what do you think you'll be in three years? Even with that <laughs> record, they still thought we wasn't here to stay. But once that Raising Hell album came out, 
that's the thing that put us in the, um, you know, the big tours, yeah. the big, the big venues. Um, the Adidas record did something historic. We was the first non-athletic entity to get a major endorsement with an ath athletic apparel footwear company. You know, you before us, it was just the, the athletes. And then Adidas took a chance with these guys who made a record about, and we didn't do the record Adidas to get the deal. You just did it because you loved it. We did it because we loved the shelf to sneaker. It was like yeah. the best thing in the world to us. And at that point, the significance of that, that, that raise and help period, why I say it was the best for us, everything was working. So we did the record with Aerosmith. We did a record about our sneakers. We just rhyming about everything. And it all was working. But I think what was significant about that, the reason why everything worked was because of this. Um, a lot of hip hop at the time was just considered ghetto music. You know what I'm saying? But we knew whether you was in the ghetto or Beverly Hills, the things we spoke about was relevant to you. If you lived in Beverly Hills or if you lived in Compton, if you lived in Hollis, Queens, or if you lived in Tokyo, if you lived in Germany, or if you lived here in the UK, the stuff we spoke about was relevant to all people of all colors and all, all hoods, you know, all neighborhoods. And I think that Raising Hell period was the period where we related to everybody, basically. You know, we re it wasn't that, you know, hip hop, most rap was just, you know, ghetto music. Oh, it's life in the ghetto, growing up in the ghetto, I'm from the ghetto, this and that. We was rhyming about all these depressing things, but when Run put me in a group, my outlook was like, even in a dirt poor ghetto, there's some good. Everywhere you go where it's measurable and some, there's something good. So if you bring those things to the forefront, you, you could have transformation. And basically what the whole purpose of hip hop was, use your creativity to inspire people. And if you use creativity to inspire people, that's when you really have transformation. So hip hop wasn't just, hip hop didn't just create rappers. And I think even when you look at the significance of when Run DMC uh, united with Adidas, I speak to the kids with hip hop created journalists such as yourself, designers, writers, directors, it was artsy, it was creativity and presentation. It's an explosion. Or exactly, of creativity. You know, pe people that don't even do music say, man, when I saw Run DMC and the BC Boys at Coochie Rapid Polo, I knew what I wanted to do. I'm a banker on Wall Street. Like, it, it just inspired you to do something.